Hey everyone, I'm Sean and this is another Church Mag unprogrammed tech talk. And this time around I wanted to talk a little bit about low budget or um, more budget friendly systems. So if you're in the market for being able to purchase a new computer, um, I have been in in the, the, the purchasing world for quite some time with computers and, and have found a few things that have really stood out that especially today, if you're looking to go out and buy a new computer, um, there are some essentials, uh, there are some things that are great to have, and there are some things that you really don't need. Um, and I know that with the ever-changing infrastructure, with the ever-changing technology uh, that we deal with on a daily basis, it can be good to have kind of a foundation laid for things that you want to look for. So first and foremost, when you're looking at a computer, uh, the whole Mac and PC thing is so overblown. You know, my, my answer to that has always been just do what is right for the job. Um, if you're using software that is only for one or the other, then obviously you've, you've made it your decision from there. Um, but if you've got cross, cross platform software, you know, the Adobe suite, um, office suites, a lot of video editing software can be done on either or, uh, then it comes down to personal preference or, you know, sometimes a lot of people will go with Apple because they feel like it helps provide them with an atmosphere. They're more comfortable with the, uh, with the operating system. They feel like it's a better suit for them. You know what? That's fine. If that helps them do their job better at times, it's worth the additional cost. Um, whether it's more secure or less secure, I'll cover that in a future episode. Uh, but for now, just know that choosing the right tool for the job is going to be really critical. Now, as far as hardware specs are concerned, um, there are a few things that I like to keep in mind. One is that I rarely go with anything less than an i5, Intel i5 processor you will be saving money by going with an AMD processor. And in the late 90s, early 2000s, it was kind of either or, it didn't have as much of an impact on performance, um, especially if you were doing one or two applications at a time versus having you know, 30 different applications at a time. That line has definitely widened a lot more, and I truly believe that the performance increase that you're gonna get with an Intel processor over an AMD budget processor uh, is well worth it. There are great AMD processors out there, but in the typical office environment, it is better to use an Intel processor. I say i5 because that's the middle of the line between the i3 and the i7. I find that the i3 doesn't give me the type of performance increase that I would like to have, um, and the cost difference isn't that much. So you can still get under 500, under $600, you can still get an i5 system that's going to perform well for you. You're not likely going to get a Mac at that price, but you know the, the Mac mini does come at a lower price. I think they're starting around 600, um, something to keep in mind. But I like to purchase systems with eight gigs of RAM at this point. That's not an essential, that's a nicety. If you can get eight or even up to 16 gigs of RAM in a system, go for it. Um, but at minimum four gigs of RAM for a modern system. You don't want to only be thinking about what my budget says right now, but you're also gonna to wanna to look at how long do I want this system to last? You know, is this going to be a desktop or a laptop that I plan to be working on for the next three to four years? Four, five, six, seven years? How long do I want this to last? And if, if it's going to be one that you wanna have last for a long time, make sure that you can easily and, um, and budget efficiently uh, upgrade those systems. So if it's a laptop that's completely enclosed, you cannot have access to hard drives or memory, um, you're gonna wanna you know, add that extra purchase to make sure that it's fully maxed out when you buy it. Um, I find too many people make the mistake of feeling like they can get into a high-end system and just get the bare minimum specs. And yes, it's going to last for quite a few years, but it's not going to last as long if you were able to be able to go in and upgrade uh, in the process. Memory, hard drives, those kind of things um, are very important, but it's uh, making sure that you have the ability to make those upgrades as times come, because then you're able to stretch a system out further rather than having to constantly refresh systems with new new hardware all the time. Um, the, the hard drive, spinning disk, SSD, that thing is a huge, huge performance impact. 
Um, being able to put an SSD into a system, a solid state hard drive into a system, is the most significant upgrade that you can make on a computer. That doesn't mean that it's essentially, or it's essential for you to have the computer come with one. They're fairly inexpensive and they're constantly coming down in price. When you've got a brand new system, if you can get it within your budget to have an SSD come with it, great. If not, make that something that you're looking at doing in the next few years. Set a budget line item that you're gonna be looking to have that available in say two years, that you can put an SSD in, it's going to provide an, a, a significant increase in performance and you don't have to worry about the added cost of it being in the system. So um, four to eight gigs of RAM, an i5 pro Intel processor, um, you know, storage space is always going to be growing, you know, getting a f at least 500 gigs of, of, uh, of hard drive space if you're in a spinning disk. Um, it's good to have that as well in an SSD, but, you know, that's, that's left up to your needs. Um, but between those, those are kind of the three main things that I look for in a system. Outside of that, brand is, is definitely important. Um, I've been a Dell advocate for years just because they've got fantastic customer support, especially for the enterprise, uh, and their warranties are pretty solid. It's not difficult to find someone local to do it. Um, HP is great as well. Lenovo is kind of another one of those brands between HP and Lenovo. Um, I work really well with them. Of course, Apple is, uh, is great when it comes to support. Um, if you have a cross-platform environment, they're, they're great to um, kind of be able to play around with, get yourself comfortable with them if you're not already, um, because they are ever-growing, and especially as the, the line of personal tech and enterprise tech begins to blur more and more with the, uh, the influx in, in personal devices, bring your own device kind of in, in, uh, infrastructure environments, you're gonna see a lot more of those kind of devices creeping in. And that's totally okay as long as you're prepared for it. So that's just a few things that, that I really look for when it comes to picking out a system. Um, those specs apply to both laptops and desktops. Um, very important to make sure that you you think ahead when you're making these purchases, that you're not just buying the cheapest computer that, that, uh, that your local Best Buy or Fry's is selling, um, but really take a hard look at your system, uh, your, your end user needs, you know, the role that the system's gonna play, and make sure that you're getting hardware that's going to fit it well. Um, the only other thing I would point out is when it comes to laptops, 1366 by 768 resolution is the baseline, but if you have the availability to do it, Get it, go, go 1080p. Uh, it's going to future-proof you quite a bit, and it's going to allow that laptop to really fit more of a need without always having to have an external monitor there available with you. Anyway, those are just a few tips. Uh, if you have questions, comments, anything like that, please feel free to comment down below, uh, like, subscribe to the Church Mag podcast here, or the Church Mag podcast. <laughs> like and subscribe to the Church Mag uh, channel here, and uh, please let me know if you have anything else that you want to be able to talk about.